Hello my friend and friends. I put out 132 videos last year, which is a lot of CSS content. And while I think all of them were at least pretty good, I went back over all of those videos that I put out last year and I found my five favorite tips that I shared. And it's not all things that are modern CSS. Actually, I think none of them were really like modern things you have to worry about browser support. It's all older stuff that a lot of people just don't seem to be aware of. And it's all things that I think we should all be adding to our repertoire. And to do that, we're gonna be starting off by taking a look at styling links. And right now you can see I have this section here that's set up that has, it's a, a link styling section that has a link in there that is currently yellow. And most of the things I wanna look at are actually not so much the, the link itself. Well, it's the underline on the link where a lot of the time you might come in with pseudo elements to replace them. Uh, but on our text decoration, this is actually a shorthand and a lot of people just do a text decoration of none and they're done with it. But let's get rid of the none that's right there. And right here, I'm gonna add in thickness like that. And we can come in and say how thick we actually want this thing to be. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be, I don't know, 16 pixels. We're gonna make it really thick. So 16 pixels thick and I get a really thick line. Now, another thing we can do, not only can you make it thicker, but you can actually change the color of it. So we can come in again with a text decoration, but this time with a color. And let's just make the underline white, I guess. Why not? Uh, or maybe red, just to show that you can change the color of just the underline if you want to, uh, which can be a nice little different touch on something instead of removing the underline. Maybe you want it to be a different color or maybe the color of the text is inherit, uh, right? Like we like to do, but you're at least still keeping an underline on there or something like that to make it more obvious that it is a link. But I'm going to put this back to yellow just for our, our demo purposes right now. Another one that we have here is let me grab my text decoration so I don't have to retype it is our style. And I'm going to come in with a double for now. So you get double lines like that, right? And it's weird that the space in between them is really narrow, but that's just what it is. So it's 12 pixels two times, uh, or I could do a dotted here and get some dots underneath there instead, or we could do our dashed, or we could come in with a nice little wavy effect there if we wanted to. Now in here, I'm just gonna come in and actually change my content a little bit here where, uh, where we have the word more. Let's go and find that here. I'm just gonna put in a J for the fun of it, just to add in the skip ink right here. And the skip ink is generally considered a good thing to have just because uh, it makes the text easier to read than when it's cutting through. And I'll show an example of what I mean by that, but you technically could turn it off and go back to the old school way uh, of doing things with a, a skip ink right here. And the we could put a none, and now it won't skip the ink anymore. So you can see the underline is actually going through it. And in this case, it actually does make the J a little bit harder to read, but the reason that this is the skip ink is the default now uh, is because if we don't change the text decoration color and you don't do a wavy on there, now is that a J or is it an I? It can be really hard to tell. Uh, and this is even obviously we're on, we have the high thickness on there, but even when you're cutting through the letter like that, it doesn't look great. So that's why uh, the skip here is usually what we have to actually skip the senders it makes the text a lot easier to read. One option you have is if you don't like the skips or maybe you wanna change the distance is, and this is one that you have to remember because all of these are text decoration, but we have a text underline offset as well. And this, the reason it's underline, I'll explain this instead of the decoration as well, there is a reason for this. Uh, but let's come in with a 16 pixels now and I've moved it down and I've moved it far enough that it doesn't need to skip the ink because it's not touching it. So you can do that and then also make it really thick and then also change the color of it and make it wavy and do whatever else that you'd want. And if you wanted to, you could come in with a negative value here. Uh, but the problem with the negative values is because we have skip ink on, let's turn that off actually, let's put none. Uh, with the skip ink, we will never see it, right? Uh, but we can come in and actually move it up if we want as well. I wouldn't really recommend this, but that option is there. But if you're skipping ink, then you'll never see it. So uh, a few things along the way there with how that works. But you might not want to have to do this. Instead of that, let's turn that one off. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to do a text decoration line. And this is, you've probably done strike through uh, text we uses line through here. So if you do need to move it over, you can do that. You'll notice with line through, the line is on top of my text where when it, it was an underline, it was behind the text. So a couple of, a little bit of a different effect there. And we don't only have line through here. You can also do an overline like that. And then it goes on top. Now the problem with the overline right now is it's really far off and that's just because it needs the space if I had a capital letter or accents or other things, but the decoration is going on top now instead of below. Uh, and this is why we have a text underline offset. This obviously only works if it is an underline. It has no control for the overline and it has no control if you do the 
um, the one that goes through the middle. And just so you know, you can do an overline underline here. And so then you have an overline and an underline, and you could also do that with a line through as well and have all three of them there for some odd reason, if you ever wanted to. The option is there. <laughs> if you ever want to do all three of them, you probably don't. You're probably going to stick with underlines, moving them around, making them thicker, changing the colors, uh, and all sorts of things like that to have a little bit more of a custom styled link without having to use pseudo elements and other things like I have definitely done in the past. All right, with that one done, let's move on to this next area where we have a friend and friend little logo right here. And I have this, let's go take a look at my BG values. Uh, and I just have this logo set as a background image on there. So you can see because it's a background image, as I resize all of this, uh, we're getting, it's just repeating itself, right? So on here, I could do a background repeat of no repeat, and then I just have it once. Or we could do a repeat X, and then it's only repeating on the Y axis, or repeat Y, and it's only repeating along the Y axis typical background image. It's just, I'm doing it with a, something like this instead of an image of something like a landscape or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, and then actually let's do one more that people know background cover, uh, background size of cover. And then, uh, ex except I have a different background size there. We'll turn that one off. And with the cover, the background size just like matches my thing here, or, or we can come in with the contain and this isn't the hint yet or the tip yet. Um, but just for a few properties that people might be familiar with, we can play around with those. Uh, but let's turn this contain off and put this back on. And what I want to talk about here is actually this background repeat where we can put on round and turn off this one right here. So a background repeat of round, what's round? It's weird, right? And what it does is instead of, let's turn that one off for a second and see how it's like cutting through the logo there. And it's just tiling this image over and over and over and over again. And if I do the round, it's always going to keep the entire image there. So if I start making this smaller, you can see it's shrinking and then, oh, I can only fit three of them. Oh, now I can only fit two. And if we go this way, the same thing's happening. You'll also notice that they're squishy. <laughs> so it's resizing and it, it's squishing the, the image that I have. And that's how round works. It's always gonna make sure that it has complete versions of it, but it doesn't mind changing the size of it. Whereas the one I think that's probably more useful is space. And what space will do is keep it at 100% of the size. And I have a background size on here of 150 pixels. So that's dictating the size of it. Uh, but if there's not enough room, it goes down to three and it just puts extra space between them and then two, and then we're down to one and something like that. And these have been around for a long time now and they're definitely a little bit more niche for sure. So I get why we don't see them come up too often, but I'm really hoping that by showing this, I, I, I like them and it's one of those things where it's like, a cool little nerd fact you can you know spring on your friends just to show them you know more about css than them but i'm sure there's going to be random weird situations where these types of things come up and you're just super happy that you know that it exists and quickly before we move on to the next tip if you want to show everyone else that you are a front end friend i of course have some merch that lets you do that whether it's to support grid cascading style sheets color spaces or if you'd like a little nice little hat you can get one of those as well links to all of those are down in the description but with that let's get back into these tips and the next one is a really fun one that's actually a bit of a two for one, which is taking a look at ranges and selecting ranges of content. So here we have nine boxes right there. And if we come in and that's just my dot box. So if I say border color is, we'll go with yellow again. You gotta spell it correctly though, yellow or yellow green. And it's not working because I put two uh, semicolons there. There we go. Uh, and I, there we go. My autocomplete was also jumping in and doing something weird, but we can come in with this. So nth child n plus three, and then an nth last child n plus three, and we select everything in between those. Uh, if you wanna do ranges of content, I actually find it easier to keep them all this way. Uh, Cause there's another thing you could do here is say n plus six. And so we're gonna select everything uh, negative, sorry, negative n plus six. And then we're gonna go from the third child to the sixth child, or you can go to the eighth one or whatever it is. And you can select a range of content that way. And this can be useful in the right situation. Let's say you had a grid like this, but you always wanted specific elements in it to be a different color or a different size. So for example, in this case, we could select these two that are right here. So that would be my fourth and my fifth one. So I would come here and say four, and then I would say my fifth one here. Uh, I counted wrong. I should say my fifth and my sixth one like that. And instead of changing the color, we could come in and say that they're a grid, uh, grid column of span two, and then make those ones bigger, for example, uh, and, and play around with that. Or this could go all the way potentially 
uh, up to eight or something like that to come in with a different style of grid without having to play around with your classes on there. And by being able to do things like this, it also means that you can count elements. And this is the, the bonus one that I wanted to talk about uh, a little bit here. So for this one, we're jumping over to a code pen where I did this, where it was actually based on a Ryan Mulligan post uh, that inspired this, where it's using grid, but always keeping the bottom row centered. You can sort of do something with Flexbox like this, but it's not quite the same as what I did here, just in case you're wondering. I'm not gonna deep dive it. I'll put a link to the this video in the description. But wait, basically what I'm doing is actually I'm counting the elements, because I'm saying that if my 3n plus four is the last child. So I know exactly what element it is, so I can select if it's uh, even columns, odd columns using this, or other ways, and then know which one the last child is. So I think this one would be divisible by five. So if it's five, 10, 15 elements, uh, we would style it in a specific way, and I'm using container queries and other things uh, in this situation. But yeah, using nth child either to get ranges of content or knowing what the last one is. And this, in this case, I'm doing if it's a multiple of, but if you just did last five is last child, then you know that there's five elements in that uh, area, and you could do that for whatever you want to count how many children there are. And then if you do that along with has, you can change the styling of the parent based on the count of the, the children and stuff. So a few little cool things you can do with nth child there. Now let's jump back over to this one and to look a little bit at counters, because what I have here right now is a whole bunch of sections of content, right? We have this section here at the top. I have another section here. I have another section here. And then we're going to get down to my last tip down at the bottom there. Uh, and what we can do here is on my counters, let's go look at the HTML actually. Uh, for each one of these, we have a new section. And then we just have the body here. And I'm gonna select my body. And in here, I'm gonna do a counter reset. And it's kind of weird because counter resets will reset a counter if you have one that's already been counting. But it's also how you create a new one. And we have to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this sections or, or sec section counter, section. We'll do section, sections would probably be fine. Uh, and in doing this, this is becoming the name of the counter that we're going to have, just section. It's my own name for it. Uh, and then what we'll say is section, we can do a counter increment and you say what you want to increment. So I want to increment my section. So every time we come across the section, it's going to be incremented by one. And then how do we do this? How can we see it? So let's come and say, we're going to do a section after. And on that section after that we have right here, what we can say is content. And in the content here, what a lot of people don't realize is you can put a counter with a name and my name is my section. And you can see, I actually have this little three that's showing up right here. So let's do a little bit more styling on here. All right, there we go. We, we have our big numbers now that are coming on each one of them. This one's a bit hard to see, uh, but we have a one, we have my two coming, we have a three here, a four coming up on that one. So we have the different sections and they're being numbered based on the counter that we have, which is really cool, right? So set a counter and then it can count and then we can use that on a pseudo element uh, within our content property. And you can do more stuff than this. Uh, for example, I could come in the content here and I could actually say section and close that and hit save. And then we get section one coming up uh, or more stuff. You can even increment by different numbers. You can count by twos, threes, fours, whatever you need. You can actually count backwards as well. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. I'm going to link to the longer video on this uh, so you can get a little bit more of an idea of some of the things you can do with it, but definitely uh, is one of those things that could be very useful in the right situation. Don't use it to replace ordered lists. If you need an ordered list, use an ordered list. But if you need more of a decorational numbering of something, it can definitely come in handy. And the last one we're gonna look at is all the way down here where we have this guy. And I'm gonna open up my dev tools for this because uh, we're gonna resize things. And I think I have some overflow that's happening for various reasons that uh, I'm gonna fix and I'll be right back. All right, not sure what was causing the overflow. I had big font sizes and stuff being used. I did something in one of those other sections that was causing it. Uh, but what I wanna look at now is these two buttons down here. And what happens is when these are getting smaller, we're getting the text inside of them is wrapping, which people usually don't want to happen. It looks kind of ugly. It's really not that nice. And what normally people do is a text wrap of no wrap on their buttons to prevent that from happening. And it prevents that problem, right? And I'm wrapping here because these are in my flex group. So display flex, the buttons go next to each other, but I have a flex wrap on there. So when there's not enough room, they stack on top of each other. Uh, and then they also have a flex one on there to ensure that they grow to stretch and fill up the space. It's exactly what I want, except 
potentially at very small sizes, you can still run into overflow because of this, because the text in these isn't wrapping. This could be something where like here, the column just won't get any smaller because this is the minimum size. That element will never get smaller than that. Or your buttons could even stick out of elements. And I've seen that happen uh, in quite a bit of code actually, where you had a button with a lot of text in or whatever it is, and it just sticks out the side of something because of our no wrap here. So a better solution for that, and. I'm going to do this and in the longer video I did that was on this topic, I did this in my flex group. It could be just default button styling and it would work perfectly well there. Or you could do it as something more with your flex group because I think it is more useful in something like this because this, you know, the way the wrapping and everything is working, but whatever works for you um, is would work. And basically in my flex group here, what I'm going to do is on the children, I'm just going to say instead of the text wrap of no wrap, I'm going to say that it has a min width of fit content. And I love, this is my favorite discovery uh, that I made last year, which you'll see it's working exactly the same way that the no wrap was working before, because the way that fit content is working is it wants to keep the text on one line if it can, but if it runs out of room, it will allow for wrapping. So basically we get the exact same result that we just had before, but if it has to wrap the text at the bottom instead of causing overflow, it will. So like worst case scenario, when we need to do it, allow for this to happen, the layout's all falling apart now anyway, you'd probably want this to stack and not run into the squished area on the side, but you get the idea that it's exactly what you wanted in the first place, but a little bit better and safer because I don't think you want to have overflows on your site. So yeah, this was definitely the favorite discovery I made. I wasn't even sure if it would work when I tried it, but I said, hey, let's see what happens. And then when I did, I definitely shared it and it was my favorite tip of 2024. Now, don't forget if you are interested in getting a shirt like this one right here, it looks pretty good or a hat you can, or if you're not looking to step up your style, but you're only looking to improve your style sheet, what I would suggest then is to check out my courses that are linked in the description as well. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Simon and Tim, as well as all all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.